Okay, we will call to order the regular meeting of the Folsom City Council for Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024. Would the clerk please call the roll? Council members Rohrbach? Here. Aquino? Here. Chalam Cherla? Here. Rodriguez? Here. And Kozlowski is absent. If you'd all please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, that brings us to business from the floor. This is the public's opportunity to address the council on items that are not on the agenda. And while we are um, happy you're here and interested in what you have to say, please understand that state law prohibits us from uh, deliberating or taking action on items that are not on the agenda. Uh, clerk will call your name. We give each of you three minutes uh, to speak. And if you could be respectful of that, we would appreciate it. Um, Madam Clerk, do we have some folks who'd like to speak to business from the floor? Yes, you have five requests to speak this evening under business from the floor. You, um, your first two speakers will be Sharon Kindle, who will then be followed by Caesar Placentia. So Sharon, come on up. First of all, I would like to show you a picture. And this is Ernie Sheldon, who was the father of Folsom Parks. Uh, since it's uh, July, it's uh, the month of um, Park Fol Folsom Parks. Um, Sharon, if you could speak right into that microphone so they can pick it up on the recording, that would be wonderful. Thank you. So Ernie Sheldon has been a dedicated advocate for the development and maintenance of Folsom Parks, playing a piv pivotal role in shaping the city's green spaces and recreational areas. His visionary leadership and unwavering commitment have significantly enhanced the quality of life for residents and visitors alike. And I just think that each July we should um, honor Ernie. When he first came here, there was only three to four parks, and now we are approaching 50 parks. So um, I have a quote that um, by Albert Einstein, look deep into nature and you will understand everything better. And then we have a quote from Alex Trebek, if you can't be in awe of nature, there is something wrong with you. So I just want to um, be so thankful for Ernie's leadership. And he had a group of people who uh, was part of Ernie's Army. And I'm proud to be one of those people. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Okay, our next speaker will be Caesar Placentia, who will then be followed by Margie Donovan. Welcome, Caesar. Hello, thank you. Um, hello, my, I'm Caesar Placentia. I'm a carpenter. Um, good evening, Chair and Council. Uh, today, I stand before you to shed light on three critical pillars of, of societal uh, well being livable wages, healthcare accessibility, and apprenticeships in construction. Uh, firstly, the concept of a livable wage is not just about earning enough to survive, but to thrive with dignity. It ensures that individuals can afford the basics, food, shelter, and healthcare. Uh, secondly, healthcare should not be a luxury, but a fundamental human right. Accessible healthcare ensures that no one has to choose between financial ruin and their well-being. Lastly, apprenticeships in construction offer a pathway to sustainable careers and economic stability. By investing in vocational training, we not only address the skilled labor shortage, but also provide opportunities for personal growth and development. In conclusion, let us strive for a, a society where everyone has access to, access to livable wages, health care, and opportunities for advancement. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Okay, our next speaker would be Margie Donovan. She's calling in. So, Margie, when you're ready, go ahead. Thank you. Good evening, Vice Mayor Aquino and Honorable City Council members and city staff. My comment tonight once again has to do with access to city council materials. 
Um, many of you know I have been advocating for our website to meet WCAG standards. And while the, while the requirement isn't absolute yet, the requirement under Title II of the ADA to make all city programs and materials accessible does exist under ADA Title II. I received an email notice and a modified um, document. The website is not fully accessible. And I immediately respond and say, I will be there. Please send me the council packet. Today, I received the council packet. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have that much time in a given day to read the full packet. When I sat down this afternoon when I got home to read the packet, unfortunately, despite the numerous times I have communicated with city management that image PDF, scanned PDF is an image file and is not accessible. Once again today, I received a scanned image PDF file of the full council packet and was unable to read it. I cannot urge this city to take the issue of ADA Title II more seriously and make all programs and services fully accessible to all members of this community. Thank you. Thank you, Margie. Thank you. Your next speaker will be Leha Sood, followed by Dennis Rogers. Tess, come on up. Yes. I apologize if I mispronounced that. Yeah, um, so um, I was under the impression that we were here to speak about uh, Ernie Sheldon today. And um, I just wanted to say just a few words. I'll keep it short. But, um, you know, I was born in 2000. I was born in Folsom. And... You know, I remember when I was born, it was just my house, a couple houses on the street, and the rest of it was just like fields and grass and trees, right? And it seems like as I grew up, the city grew up with me. You know, we saw Intel, we saw Palladio, we saw, you know, all the developments south of 50. And the person, one key person who was instr instrumental in all of that change was Ernie Shelton, right? And... I'm just so grateful to have, you know, known him, worked with him, and um, really see what it truly means to be a public servant. And I'm, I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to be able to speak on him. And yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Tasha. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker will be Dennis Rogers, who will be followed by Justin Rathel. Good evening. Hi, Vice Hi. Mayor. Nice to see you. Um, my name is Dennis Rogers. I live on Pennock Court. Um, and I'm here tonight because you guys were doing a paving project in our neighborhood, right? And those aren't a lot of fun. But I'm here tonight because Mark Rackovin and Ryan Chance were very responsive. We had some issues that were going on there. Um, unfortunately, Saturday morning at 7 a.m., the contractor had a jackhammer on our street, right? Um, I emailed Ryan and he got back to me, I think, at like 7.30 in the morning. So I'm here because not a lot of times people come in and say, hey, you have responsive staff. I didn't agree with everything that was going on. We went back and forth. They were incredibly responsive. They were incredibly professional. Um, and they uh, showed out well for you guys. And I just wanted to say thank you to them and make sure that all of you, especially Ms. Anderson, heard that because she is their boss. Um, so that, that in a very difficult situation, um, they managed it well, and the impacts are difficult, and asphalt stinks, you know, and you can't open your windows when your wife is calling you saying, hey, I'm trapped in the middle of the cul-de-sac because there's these giant trucks in the middle, and I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do about it? But your staff was very responsive, and I just wanted to make sure I said that. And I just also, which is a couple of seconds, just wanted to also thank Ernie because, you know, both my daughters were born here. They were born at Folsom Mercy. Um, you know, they grew up and played sports throughout all the parks. My wife and I love the the infrastructure that's here. Um, and so it is wonderful when you have uh, folks like Ernie, among others, um, who've contributed to the quality that's here. So, but the main point today was uh, to come in and extol the virtues of Ryan and Mark because they were very kind to respond to a single individual who was a little cranky because his wife was cranky. <laughs> on some emails when I heard Jack Hammers at 7 a.m. and I just wanted to make sure that they got their due for the hard work that they do. Thank you, Thank you very much, much for coming out. out. We, we appreciate all feedback, but especially positive feedback. So thank, thank you. you.
All right, your final speaker under business from the floor will be Justin Raithel. Good evening. Good evening, Vice Mayor, Council Members. Um, I wanted to report back quickly. I was here a couple weeks ago asking for um, an acceleration of the cleanup uh, around the Park Shore community. Um, I went and walked that area earlier today, um, and I'm here to say thank you uh, for getting that area cleaned up. Um, many of the residents were, uh, when I walked that area, they were upset and irritated and ready to um, to reclaim the natural spaces around their area, and they were worried about fire danger and sanitation issues. So. I just want to say thank you uh, to our chief, our code enforcement, uh, and also the staff for coordinating with Fish and Game um, and making sure not only the encampments on city property were cleaned up, but also the ones on federal property. I'm also here tonight. i uh, got some handouts for you. Uh, I'm here to urge you to pass a resolution in support of Proposition 36, uh, which is looking to make some changes to Proposition 47. It's the Homelessness, Drug Addiction, and Theft Reduction Act. Um, I brought you some sample resolution language tonight. Um, I know you can't take action on business from the floor. Uh, I also brought you a small flyer from the Californians for Safer Communities, which outlines what's in uh, that proposition. We have a retail theft problem in Folsom, as been mentioned by our chief many times here in these chambers. Um, and one of the unintended consequences of Prop 47 was to allow criminals uh, to steal up to $950. Uh, if they stole less than $950 per theft, they really weren't prosecuted. So Prop 36 will allow um, our officers and the district attorney to aggregate those uh, thefts uh, up to over $950 and make it a felony again. Prop 36 also adds fentanyl uh, to the list of hard drugs. Uh, unfortunately, fentanyl is now responsible for 20% of youth deaths in the state of California, which is unacceptable. Uh, it does need to be on the hard drug list. Um, I'm proud of the work our police department has done. Uh, with chasing down the traffickers and dealers of fentanyl in our community, uh, but this proposition will allow them to intervene earlier, hopefully before uh, incidents like that happen in our community again. Finally, Prop 36 will enact a new class of crime uh, called the Treatment Mandated Felony, which gives offenders with multiple hard drug convictions the opportunity uh, to go in for treatment instead of being incarcerated, which I think is a great option. The California League of Cities has recently voiced their support the mayors of San Francisco, San Jose, Fresno, and Santa Monica have also voiced their support. If you go to the website, there's 2,000 uh, businesses, different communities. I think there's only about six or seven cities that have passed resolutions in support so far, uh, but we'd love to see Folsom on the list. Uh, it's time for Folsom to advocate for what's best for our community, so I hope that you guys will pass a resolution of support for Prop 36 uh, as soon as you can. Thank you for your time tonight, I appreciate all you do. Thank you for the suggested language. We actually already have this on our radar and we're planning to bring it back a second meeting in August. So thank you. Um, okay, that takes us to uh, agenda update. Madam City Attorney, any agenda update to report? No update, thank you. Just a couple maybe documents on the back table. <laughs> My apologies, um, an update to item six. I believe there is some information for the council and item eight um, as well has some citizen communication. Thank you very much, okay. Uh, that brings us to our consent calendar. Uh, do we have any requests to speak on any consent items? You have no request from the public to speak on okay. consent calendar Any items. council member who wants to pull a consent item? Uh, no, I just want to make a comment. Okay. Not pulling. Uh, item number two, uh, I just want to sincerely thank uh, Mark, Chloe, and uh, Paul Ramiro, no names, uh, for giving their voluntary team again to serve on Allendale. We always look for volunteers. There are plenty of openings out there. Thank you again, sincerely. I'll go ahead and move items one through four okay. on the consent. I'll second on that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Council members Rorba? Yes. Chalam Cherla? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. And Aquino? Yes. Okay, uh, next we're gonna go to our uh, five public hearings. We'll do all of these the same way. First, we'll have a staff presentation, then questions from staff. Then we'll open up the public hearing, uh, take public comment, close the public hearing, and bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So, first item, please. Yeah, so first item is item number five. This is ordinance number 1347. This is an ordinance adopting prima facie speed limits on Folsom Lake Crossing, White Rock Road, and Savannah Parkway. This will be introduction and first reading of the ordinance. Uh, good evening, uh, Vice Mayor, members of council. Uh, Zach Bosch, Bosch was supposed to give uh, this presentation this evening. He had a family situation to take care of, so uh, I'm coming off the bench for him. Mm -hmm. so. 
Um, the item before you, uh, as the city clerk mentioned, is we have three new uh, speed limits uh, that we're uh, recommending that you adopt. Um, just a brief refresher that speed limits are set through a process known as the engineering and traffic survey. Uh, this is uh, this is absolutely required if uh, Folsom Police Department is going to be able to use radar to enforce uh, said speed limit. Um, why do we need these? Uh, we have to establish what the prevailing speed is on the roadway in question, again, to enable the use of radar speed enforcement. Um, having a properly posted speed limit does encourage uniform driving behavior. Uh, it, it establishes the baseline for what most of the motorists uh, choose to feel is the reasonable, prudent speed to drive on the given roadway. Uh, those that drive too fast will then be subject for, to uh, enforcement. Um, it does take into consideration actual speed data uh, of uh, survey of, of cars that are traveling at free flow speed under uh, no, no constrained conditions. It takes into account the collision history and the roadway factors uh, present uh, at the time of, of the survey. Uh, and again, not only is this required by the California Vehicle Code, uh, but uh, there are state and federal pro guidelines and uh, uh, policies that we have to adhere to. And of course, the Folsom Municipal Code, which uh, uh, delegates the responsibility of adopting the final speed limit to you, the city council. So the three surveys in question are um, the section of Folsom Lake Crossing, where we recently completed the median barrier. Uh, it, it's important to understand that this survey only covers the section of the roadway from the East Natoma Street traffic signal to the top of the hill where the, the spillway traffic signal is. That, that was the extent of our phase one median barrier project. Uh, so since we made a very substantial change to the character of that road, we took the opportunity to resurvey it and it's a good thing we did. Uh, we're very pleased with the outcome here, uh, uh, an enforceable 45 mile an hour speed limit on that, uh, that stretch of road. Uh, again, this does not affect the portion of the roadway from the top of the hill at the spillway all the way down to Folsom Auburn Road. That, that section was not changed yet. Uh, when we come back with our phase two median barrier project, then that will afford us an opportunity to resurvey that section. Savannah Parkway is a recently constructed uh, collector street in the Folsom Plan area. Uh, so a roadway never existed before, never had a pre-existing survey. Uh, the, the initial survey came in at 35 miles per hour, which is uh, an appropriate speed limit for that type of road and consistent with similar uh, such roadways uh, in, um, uh, elsewhere in the city of Folsom. And then White Rock Road, this is actually the portion of the Capitol Southeast connector that was constructed from Prairie City to East Bidwell. The original White Rock Road, the, the rural two-lane uh, roadway with the 55 mile an hour speed limit was completely re-engineered as a high speed, limited access expressway built to essentially freeway standards. Um, the, so this is a brand new survey for that newly engineered road. Uh, we came in at, at a uh, enforceable 60 mile per hour speed limit. And, uh, so again, uh, that's those are the only three surveys we have for you uh, this evening, and, and we do request and recommend that you adopt all three speed limits. Uh, take any questions that you have. Any questions? Just to clarify, from Folsom Auburn to the top where the spillway is, it is 55 miles an hour, and then as you make the turn to uh, Natoma, it is 45? So, yeah, from Folsom Auburn to the, you know, past the gun range mm -hmm. and then to the top of the hill, uh, it, I think it is posted 55. Mm -hmm. That is not backed up by a radar speed survey. Okay. Um, but when you get to the top of the hill where the spillway traffic signal is and all the way down under the Johnny Ca mm -hmm. Cash overcrossing down to the East Natoma signal, that will all have an enforceable 45 mile per hour speed. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Council Member Warbaugh, any questions? Council Member Chalamchala? Yes, I do. Um, uh, especially, uh, I want to give kudos to bringing that 45 uh, 
otherwise it was 55. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mark, I know you and I briefly talked, and I think that this has been my concern. If you can scroll back either second slide or third slide, where, uh, yes. Why do we need to do ETS? So the, uh, I'm sorry. No, no, they're all good. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying anything at all. So they're all good. Uh, the one thing when the policies are being written, it's a very scientific way of written. Mm -hmm. My concern is the human behavioral element is the one I have a big concern. If you can go to the next one now. Oh, uh, this one? Yes. 85th percentile. So that's my problem right now. If uh, 85 cars out of 100, I can say that way, right? 85th percentile, almost, close to, uh, are going in that speed, which is right now, I think, uh, uh, 66 miles per hour. For the White Rock Road. White Rock Road, road yes. right? Um, when we all use our psychology, our mindset, when you look at the speed limit board, that gives you a trigger to your sixth sense. Okay, freeway 50, highway 50 is 65. People snooze to close to six, 70 to 75. And the people, again, laws are there, enforceables, I get it. Uh, I'm not denying on that fact, but we do enforce, not every day. I want to be honest as well. Uh, Chief Hillman is not here, but probably he may be listening. He has a much, much other high priorities. Uh, Vice Mayor, my, my request is, if you can go to the next one, Mark. 60, the minute people see 60, I draw twice, in fact, even today also. As it rightfully said, uh, it's a 55 posted because of the old ones. I draw, there is 55 miles per hour post speed between East Bedwell and Priory City, and I draw all the way from Priory City to the Douglas. It's 55 already posted. So now we are telling the drivers who are driving, now you can go 60, that's a posted speed. My concern there is, they'll go either 65, they'll hit 70. Those are very local roads still. And there is a Scott Road is going to cut through from the freeways, and the senior homes are very next to it, they're all going to merge into the free, that, that place. That's fast. I rather you know, want to keep it as a 55, whatever it is right now. Yes, it is not enforceable. I get it. I, I'm, I'm agreeing on that one. But are we enforcing every day? No, and, I we are. Right? I'm sorry, right? Mm -hmm. So my, my consensus is we have other priorities. Even though we are going to enforce, I was talking to my wife and my few friends before I come to this meeting. Do you know there is an enforceable speed? All of them said no. We don't know. If the cop is there holding the gun, I'm going to slow down. So my request is keep that as a 55. Higher speed is not going to do for, any, for anybody any good. That's my request to my colleagues here. You have a scientific evidence, Mark. I'm not denying on that fact. I'm using the common sense and people behavior into it. <clears throat> so I have a follow-up question then. If, if you recommended if we said 55, is that enforceable? Because it seems like the pace range there, 55 to 65, that might support it. It does not. It has to be. So It, it would either have to be 65 or 60 miles per hour uh, to be enforceable with radar. And why is that? Because of how, I'm not questioning you, I'm just uh -huh. curious, like how, how does that? Very fundamentally, the way uh, engineering and traffic surveys are, are conducted is you have to determine what is the 85th percentile, as okay. Council Member Tallam Charla mentioned. That's the speed that's not exceeded by 85% of the surveyed vehicles. Once you determine what that speed is, you round off to the nearest five mile per hour increment. That's what I missed. And then you get one additional five mile per hour downward zoning for uh, engineering factors. So in this case, 85th percentile is 66, rounds to 65, and you get one downward zoning, which gets you to 60. So 60 is the absolute minimum enforceable speed limit with radar. Okay, thank you for explaining that again. Hmm? 
Any other questions for Mark? Okay, then we will open the public hearing. Do we have any members of the public who wish to address the council? You have no request to speak on this item. Anyone in the audience who maybe didn't fill out a blue card who would like to speak to this item? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. Uh, if there are no other questions, I will entertain a motion. I'll go ahead and move ordinance number one, one, sorry, one, three, four, seven. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Council members Rohrbach? Yes. Chalam Cherla? Uh, no, for, Rod I know I can't split that one, but my vote is no. Rodriguez? Yes. Aquino? Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Next item, please. Okay, your next item, item number six. This is resolution number 11232. This is a resolution approving and confirming the report of delinquent utility charges and requesting Sacramento County to collect such charges on the tax roll. As a reminder, this was the item that had amendments to it. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Folder got closed. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm getting there, I think. No? Okay, good evening. Uh, Vice Mayor, Council Members, I'm Elizabeth Hanna, the Revenue Services Supervisor, and I will be going over items six through eight. All right, so item six is resolution number 11232. It's a resolution to the City Council of the City of Folsom approving and confirming the report of the delinquent utility charges and requesting Sacramento County to collect such charges on the tax roll. Um, so the city provides various utility services to approximately 27,000 properties throughout the city, including water, sewer, and solid waste services, and the revenue division bills and collects approximately $54 million annually in municipal uh, utility charges. So per California code and Folsom Municipal Code, we can transfer delinquent utility charges to the county tax roll. Uh, while the vast majority of our accounts throughout the city are current, there are some that are more than 60 days delinquent with delinquent balances of $150 or greater. These accounts are appropriate for transfer to the county tax roll for collection. So the report you are approving tonight lists 186 active accounts for a total of $248,884. Um, these are all more than 60 days delinquent. Each owner receives a monthly bill and, if delinquent, monthly delinquent notices. An intent to lien was mailed to property owners on June 20th, which included a deadline to dispute any charges. Additionally, the public hearing notice was published on July 5th and July 12th, and um, I will note that our deadline to send the transfer file to the county is August 2nd. So with this item, I'm recommending that you adopt Resolution 112. Three, two, requesting the county auditor to transfer these delinquent amounts to the property tax roll for collection. Thank you. Any questions for Liz? Okay. Um, then we will open the public hearing. Do we have any requests to speak? You have no request to speak on this item. Anyone in the audience want to come forward to speak? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing and I will entertain a motion. I'll go ahead and Madam interrupt. Vice Mayor, if I could just interrupt oh, for one second. Yes. I just wanted to clarify a couple things for the record. First of all, if... Um, Councilmember Rodriguez could mention that the council will be approving the updated report that was submitted um, this afternoon rather than the original one. There are some differences there and we wanna make sure the county collects the accurate amount. And just for the record, this will require a two thirds vote. Thank you. Thank you. Two thirds vote, yeah, okay. So uh, uh, Vice Mayor, I just want to make a comment. I was talking to Liz also, she understands my problem. Uh, but good job from Friday 2.30 to now 186. Uh, yeah. Yeah, We've you collected, collected quite a bit. in the last two days. Yep. Awesome. Uh, my only request is, uh, no, uh, these are the homeowners. That's what, uh, Liz, you are saying. And, well, some uh, are commercial property owners, correct? Yes. yes. So, but they are the legal property yes. owners, yeah. Yeah, the legal property owners. My intuition says most of them are renters and... Uh, homeowners may or 90% may not know. And uh, I'm, I was taking myself as an example. I stopped receiving physical uh, 
hard copy bills. I am more electronic. And I was requesting our city, uh, if I'm a homeowner, renter, I may have a business license and everything, all those are good, but he is only receiving the electronic and we are sending the yellow or pink yes. delinquent notices as a hard copies. But he's only receiving soft copy bills and he is making payments or not making. So my request is, we got to open up in a multiple channels of communications to at least these uh, challenging 180 plus customers. That's my request. Uh, we can definitely put this on the lean right now, but we have to adopt, besides the physical mails, find uh, electronic emails, those ones. I know you mentioned our uh, billing system is not allowing right now. I got it. But we still have to put this request. Uh, if the billing system is not allowing, whether you know, one of our administrative assistants can help. However, I don't know. That way, we can have a full proof that we tried every aspect, every possible way. And we can that's look into that's that. my comment and request. That's okay. all. Thank you. All right. I will move forward with resolution number 11232, approving the updated report. A second. OK, we have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Council members Rohrbaugh? Yes. Chalam Cherla? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. And Aquino? Yes. Next item. Next item is item number seven. This is resolution number 11233. This is a resolution amending prior resolution number 11172 and approving the updated city impact and connection fee schedule for law enforcement, fire suppression, general facilities, vehicles and equipment, park improvement, Humbug Willow Creek, housing trust, water, sanitary, sewer, solid waste, transportation improvement, drainage, and light rail impact fees. Thank you. Krista, so I won't really say that. <laughs> um, so in May 2006, City Council adopted Resolution 7812, which established a new city impact and connection fees and adopted an annual inflationary adjustment. Uh, the inflationary adjustment is from the Engineering News Record uh, Construction Cost Index for January through December 2023. The 2023 CCI is 2.70%. Um, and so within that report, we have the updated fees applying the annual inflationary adjustment, and we do recommend that you adopt resolution 11232 or 11233. So Liz, for this item and also for the next one, because the staff report references that 2006 action, I think it's maybe a little bit confusing to the public. Does that mean we haven't done a comprehensive rate study since 2006? Our fee study? Different departments have done studies overall comprehensively. I would say no, we haven't done the whole city all at once. For this one, for impact fees, they have been done when new impact fees have come on or if there's needed to be an increase or a change to a fee if you wanted to add a facility. Okay. So for this one, there's definitely been studies as any new fee has come on. Um, and Pam might be able to add to that. Yeah, other. and then community development this year did the Nexus study, and you recall we came to you for the next item right. as it relates to planning fees. We moved forward with building and engineering fees that the city council adopted, and then we'll plan to bring the, the bigger planning fee update item back <clears throat> to city council in the first quarter of next year, and that schedule we laid out for you in June. Um, and so this would just be the annual inflationary adjustment on the next item for um, you know, for the planning fees, and then we'll address the bigger potential increases based on that Nexus study uh, in 2025. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions for Liz before we go to public comment? Okay, then we'll open the public hearing. Do we have any requests to speak? You have no request to speak on this item. I assume nobody in the audience wants to speak to this one either, so we will close the public hearing and I will entertain a motion. I will move adoption make it. of resolution number 11233. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Council Member Rorba? Yes. Chalam Cherla? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Anna Kino? Yes. Okay. Next item, Liz. Okay, next item is item number eight, resolution number 11235, a resolution amending prior resolution number 11219 and enacting the annual inflationary adjustment for city user fees for planning. Okay. okay. 
So again, in May 2006, Folsom City Council adopted Resolution 7815, which established a new user fee schedule for selected city services and adopted an annual inflationary adjustment. Uh, the annual inflationary adjustment is from the U.S. Bureau of Statistics and California Department of Finance, CPI, West Urban Consumer, San Francisco, CMSA, um, and the annual amount as of December of the previous calendar year. So the 2023 CPI is 2.62%, um, and these fees would be effective September 21st, 2024. So as Pam mentioned, this is the planning fees that were pulled out of the last one, so just keeping the current ones and increasing by the inflationary adjustment. Um, so staff recommends that council adopt resolution 11235. Okay, any questions for Liz on this item? I do, I have a question based, I mean, I didn't think of this myself, based on the emails we got. Um, um, so I'm sure you've read the couple email. Okay, I thank you. Um, so which provides the, so I'll just, start in the in the middle requires a review and update fees every three years but that requirement is not mentioned or addressed in this report can you address that i could help with that one thank you for this particular one the planning fees we are addressing it right now and with okay what you yes. just discussed mm -hmm. okay okay that was mine any other questions for liz or staff then we will open the public hearing do we have any requests to speak you have no request to speak on this item and I see no one in the audience running down. So we will close the public hearing and I will entertain a motion. I'll go ahead and move resolution number 11235. <coughs> okay. Second. Okay, perfect. We've got a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Council members Rorba? Yes. Chalam Cherla? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. And Aquino? Yes. Last one. Okay, our last public hearing this item this evening is item number nine. This is resolution number 11236. This is a resolution approving the final engineer's report for all the landscaping and lighting districts <laughs> mentioned on their agenda. Yes, please don't read them I'm all. I'm not going to read them all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, good evening, uh, Vice Mayor, members of the council. I'm Jameson Larson, Municipal Landscape Services Manager. I'm presenting the resolution approving the final engineer's report for 2425. Uh, in summary, this report includes all 30 lighting landscaping districts in one report. Uh, there have been no changes to the engineer's report from the preliminary approved on June 11th. Uh, we are, we do have four districts that are not being assessed a maximum authorized rate. Uh, these districts have adequate fund balance to achieve a balanced budget without the need to assess the full amount. Uh, there are a number of districts that are inadequately funded currently and uh, in order to continue absorbing the rising cost of service. These districts currently being monitored for future outreach regarding a new assessment overlay include Briggs Ranch, Hanford Cross, Cobble Ridge 2, Reflections 2, and Broadstone number 4. Uh, we are continuing outreach in Natoma Station for this fiscal year. And then we have some major projects uh, included in the various districts uh, contained in this report, including completion of ladder fuel removal and all L&L open space areas for fire hazard reduction, and then a continued focus on water-wise landscaping, including multiple areas of landscape retrofit to change from turf to drought-tolerant shrubs. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions for Jameson? Uh, only one thing. I know I'm trying to look for those words. This has gone through l and committee. Yes, the preliminary budgets went to each of the members. Each of the review. members, they discussed, and yes. they're aware. I'm sure they're passing down to the Humsoya or the residents mm -hmm. they want. Okay, good, thanks. Okay, then we will open the public hearing. Do we have any requests to speak? Once again, you have no request to speak on this item. Okay, then we will close the public hearing, and I'll entertain a motion. I'll go ahead and move resolution number 11236. I'll second on that. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Council members Rorba. I feel like we're in speed dating, but yes. <laughs> Chalam Cherla? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Aquino? Yes. Okay. Final item, please. Final item tonight is new business item number 10. This is resolution number 11234. This is a resolution conditionally approving an affordable housing loan in the amount of $2.7 million from the city's housing fund to Pacific West Communities, Inc., authorizing the city manager to execute a loan agreement and related document for the construction of 52 affordable housing units at the proposed Harrington Grove multifamily affordable housing development and appropriation of funds. Good evening, Stephanie. Good evening. Um, good evening, vice mayor, council members. So final item for this evening 
is a request for an affordable housing loan for Harrington Grove uh, multifamily project. So uh, West Development Ventures, which is an affiliate of Pacific West Companies, is requesting a $2.7 million in gap financing from the city to um, assist with the construction of a proposed 52-unit multifamily affordable project called Harrington Grove. Um, the proposed 1.94 acre site is located at 751, 771, and 791 Harrington Way, which is shown on the screen in front of you. The neighborhood is uh, surrounded by an urgent care facility, the Overlook Apartments, and an assisted living facility and is strategically located um, next to the bike trail and various retail and dining options. The project is in the early stages of pre-development planning and financial structuring and has not yet submitted an application for design review. However, they have provided us with this conceptual site plan, which shows um, two residential buildings. As indicated in the staff report, to meet the August 2024 tax credit funding round and to leverage some current state tax benefits, the developer is requesting $2.7 million from the city for the proposed project. Uh, the slide on the screen ahead of you provides a snapshot of the timeline for funding request and also gives an overview of the city's housing funds. Um, there is currently 18.9 million approximately available to fund affordable housing projects. Uh, the city's affordable housing loan consultant, TDA consultant, uh, conducted a preliminary review of the early stage due diligence documents, which included a pro forma, site plan, purchase agreement, and project summary and concluded that the project is generally structured within acceptable um, industry standards and that the $2.7 million amount, which represents $52,941 per affordable unit, is reasonable. Um, due to the timing of the TCAC application deadline, which is August 27, 2024, and City Council's August recess, TDA's review was somewhat compressed and therefore they were recommending that the city's commitment be limited to this August 27-24 funding round uh, with any future funding commitments contingent on the developer providing more finalized due diligence documentation. As such, that condition was added to the term sheet which is included in your packet. Um, with regards to the other terms for the loan, they are pretty consistent with what has been approved in the past. And most of those are summarized on the slide before you. It's also important to note that the funding comes from the city's housing fund, Fund 238 primarily, and that this will not impact the city's general fund. Um, over the past 18 years or so, the city has provided numerous affordable housing loans. Those, um, those projects and amounts are um, summarized on this slide ahead of you. And this project would add 51 more affordable units if, if funding is approved by the city and future development is approved by Planning Commission. Um, before concluding the report, um, or my presentation in preparing this presentation this evening, it was discovered that the staff report referenced an incorrect CEQA reference. The correct exemption should have been cited in the staff report were CEQA guideline sections 15061B3, assistance to, uh, which is for the common sense exemption, and CEQA guideline section 15267 financial assistance to low moderate income housing. It is worth noting that when the project goes before planning commission, it will undergo CEQA review and um, that will be during the design review process. 
So in conclusion, staff is recommending that the city council conditionally approve an affordable housing loan for Harrington Grove in the amount of $2.7 million and adopt resolution number 11234. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Stephanie? Councilmember Chalamachurla, any questions? Uh, no, I just want to, you know, thank for all her, you know, 100% um, due diligence on this. Uh, I want to thank Pacific West Communities also for picking the Folsom because we are adding another 51 homes for workforce. Our workforce, you know, in, in our town, their affordability is not that much. Uh, uh, Vice Mayor, I think maybe this is more of a policy question. We can talk later on. I just want to put it out there. Uh, right now, the builders or the investors who knows about these projects are they are reaching out to cities and uh, uh, they know we have funds and we are giving them this much. Uh, but are there any way we as a city can be more transparent how much we have, we are welcoming uh, investors to provide more workforce housing. So right now we don't, unless I'm speaking wrong, uh, we don't have a set thing out there policies which as a city can go out and uh, share the information to everybody. And only those people who wants to work or has, a, you know, find the lots, they can come and build. So uh, anything you can correct my statements, please. Yeah, so we don't cur currently have like an affordable housing loan policy or program, but we actually are working on that right yeah. now with our, our consultant, TDA Consulting. And the hope and desire is to have a set standard going forward that will be helpful for finance so that we're not always negotiating terms, that we have consistent terms throughout and that um, we can, uh, when we have funding such as we do now, that we can have an RFP, a request for proposal sent out and maybe have some competition between different developers or you know, let developers know that, that the city has funding that might not approach the city otherwise. Can I just make a comment? And also, just one thing I've learned over the last four years, there are um, developers that specialize in the affordable housing building, correct? So they would know of the funds that may be available to them. Is that correct? Well, if we're not posting it, they might not know how much the city has available. Mm -hmm. So okay. if we have the program and then if we, you know, once we have enough money that we think mm -hmm. we could fund an affordable housing project, we could do an RFP process. We've been really lucky because we have a lot of developers that have experience in mm -hmm. the city that you know, know that they yeah. want to build here and they will reach out to us and say, hey, you know, do you guys think you have enough money to fund a project? We've been kind of letting them know that we're trying to do this process so they are aware of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good suggestion. That sounds Thank like you. it's on their radar. Uh, any members of the public who wanted to speak on this item? No. Okay. Uh, then if there are no further questions or comments, we will entertain a motion. And the, the developer is here oh. if you have questions, yeah. just in case. Would you like to speak or would uh, it sounds like we're, okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, Madam Chair, uh, Mike Kelly with the Pacific Companies. Thank you for uh, allowing me to visit with you today. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you, know, you may have. I guess we're the last item up here, so get, get you out of here. Um, we are, uh, we're not new uh, to the city, though. We do have a project on Oak and Blue Ravine. It's uh, the Peterson Place, 72 units. Uh, we worked on that a number of years ago. In fact, Arnie Sheldon was instrumental in, in, in shepherding that through. Um, we also have five projects in uh, Elk Grove right now. We have a 296-unit project under construction, a uh, very similar financing structure on Laguna and uh, uh, Bruceville. And then we also have a 196-unit project uh, in the city of Lincoln. And all of these projects are uh, public-private partnerships with, with the city. So I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for choosing Folsom. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you again, Mark. Yep. Thank okay, you. I'll All entertain right. a motion. Right. I'll go ahead and move resolution number 11234. I'll second on that. We have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Council members Roba? Yes. Chalam Cherla? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. And Aquino? Yes. 
Okay, uh, any council requests for future agenda items? I have one. Um, uh, several representatives from the city of Folsom recently went on the study mission to Columbus, Ohio. And when we went on this last year, we had Choose Folsom come and present some highlights from the trip that, uh, that could be applicable to our city. So I would like to see a presentation from Choose Folsom on the study mission to Columbus, Ohio. Okay, I will invite them. Councilmember Yeah, I have um, a couple. Um, one, I uh, there was a lot of discussion during the budget about the Kids Play Park, also known as Castle Park. Um, so I want to make sure that um, our public is very engaged in this process or um, in what's happening with this project on both sides, pro and against. Um, I want to make sure that um, we are understanding. Um, if the council is supporting a competitive bid process, um, and also that we're encouraging that we do what we need to do now as that process goes forward, and then um, how we can support the nonprofit that's been developed. So I'm wondering if a presentation of action steps and timelines would be the best way to do this, and then that we, then we could discuss fully about what the council sees, since this was really uh, came from the city manager and the draft budget, but really um, fully supported by the entire council. So I see this as something that we need to do regular updates on, um, also give input on. So I would like to see that okay. as a process. Um, number two, um, my, count, uh, my colleague um, Rodriguez um, mentioned the economic development consultant. Um, I was in the, I think it was May meeting. Um, they were pretty close to delivering. Um, I would like to see this brought in the last meeting in August, August 27th. Um, I believe they're giving an update to the staff on, in, at the end of July. I would also like to be a, just a witness of that meeting as well, just like the last time. Um, uh, this was an independent consultant, so you know I would really like to have them be able to present what they have, and then the council as a whole can give them feedback and, and, and then discuss it as a full. So I'd like to see that as soon as possible versus waiting till the fall. I think there was a little ambu ambiguity um, when, um, Elaine, you mentioned, well, it might be late summer into fall. I would like to see that um, August 27th for sure, um, knowing that they're pretty much ready besides the feedback they'll get in July. Um, number three. That's it for agenda. Okay, thank you. Council Member Challenger, line anything? I, not, no, no. Okay, perfect, thank you. Then we'll move on to city manager reports. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Sacramento Regional Transit is continuing construction efforts to add a passing track to provide 15-minute service frequency to full Samaria stations. The anticipated completion date, as well as the temporary bus bridge and road closures, has been extended a few weeks due to the required movement of underground conduit. Uh, lane closures are in effect on Folsom Boulevard as part of this project. So related to this, the City of Folsom, Choose Folsom, and Sac RT will share shop local messages with a spotlight on Folsom Boulevard. So look out for social media posts, e-blast banners, and transit ads. Um, at the request of the Folsom City Council, we are impl implementing a new program to spotlight community members who have gone above and beyond to serve and improve the Folsom community. The city is now accepting applications for the new Spirit of Folsom Award and Annual Recognition Program. Each Folsom City Council member will nominate one recipient from their respective city council district, complete the online nomination form by Friday, August 9th to share the story of a deserving individual. And please check out our website for more information. And finally, join Folsom's first res uh, responders on Wednesday, July 31st for the Battle of the Badges Blood Drive hosted by Vitalint. The Folsom Fire Department and Folsom Police Department will compete to gather the most blood donations. Community members are invited to donate blood and vote for their favorite law enforcement therapy dog. Choose between Team Liberty, Folsom Police Department, or Team Blitz, Folsom Fire Department. The blood drive will be held at the Folsom Police Department at 46 Natoma Street from 10 to 2 p.m. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council Member Chalancherla. Uh, tomorrow evening from 4.30 to 6 p.m., uh, Big Wave Coffee Shop, we have under the banner, Coffee with Cop, that's the banner, but we have you know, uh, uh, Mark Rakavan from Public Works and also um, Kelly from the Parks and Rec. They're all generously agreed to join us. Residents, if you are watching, please join us and uh, bring any concerns you have, whether you have a stop sign issues or cops issues or any parks or trail issues. We will have a, a city staff, you know, expert city staff to answer your questions. This is again tomorrow.
from 4.30 to 6 o'clock at the Big Wave Coffee. Uh, Vice Mayor, that's all I have. Okay, Thanks. Council Member Orba. I have several things. First, um, we just got an email today, but also I've been hearing a lot about the um, school board discussion um, about the transportation and reducing of the bus transportation. Um, so I want to encourage the staff, um, Arlene, if maybe, the, maybe as we prepare for the consequence of that, if there is a conversation you could have um, with SAC RT to evaluate options that we might, may or may not need once school starts, I, mean, I think people are going to start realizing um, how it's affecting them by the beginning of August when school, and then as school starts. Um, maybe it's an additional stop or two, um, but maybe start having that conversation now so we can prepare if there is any consequences to it. Also, maybe communicating with the public that it's the school board uh, that will decide this and here's what's happening just as a communication um, outreach to prepare them because as we know that the public will come to us um, and this wasn't our decision, but um, just kind of may and maybe keep us posted on those conversations. Um, and then um, a couple, I mean, uh, I think it was YK that was saying um, a couple staff things. I do want to thank Mark and Marie um, for having a meeting. I don't usually ask staff to come to meetings very often with a resident, but they came with, our staff came with some great solution, or a great solution, and I, everyone came away just really happy, and it was a really brief, very um, professional conversation, and I just really respect and thank you for taking the time to Make the make me look good to our constituents and business owners. So um, thank you for that. Chris O'Keefe um, put a plaque on one of the benches in my neighborhood that they've been working on for about over a year for someone who passed two years ago, and it just meant a lot that him and his crew came out and took the time to take such good care and um, gave good feedback. So I just want to thank him specifically. And this goes in line with my other item. Um, I just want to thank Kelly Gonzalez for taking the time to go down the Choose Folsom trip, which I um, got the privilege of attending um, in Columbus, Ohio as well, um, last minute because our mayor couldn't go. Um, and it was completely worthwhile. We got a, had a lot of great conversations, but seeing her light up on different um, meetings we had, and I would light up on different meetings. Um, and it was really great to have a staff member there to kind of help facilitate this. So I would encourage that we include um, maybe the, the, the Rosario and I were the ones that attended and um, our staff member who also went as well in that presentation. Um, and that leads me to um, what else happened at the, um, the Choose Folsom Columbus trip. El Dorado Chamber, Choose Folsom. Um, there was a lot of dignitaries there. Um, one of the unseen benefits of it is the connections you made. They made a lot, uh, talked a lot about public-private partnerships. We throw that word around, those words around a lot, but really how, what one things we learned, some of the things that we learned was really how to facilitate and make that happen, whether it's a special improvement district or um, safe and clean programs, putting those together first. But really some of the overarching things were that um, Columbus is really trying to revitalize their downtown. Of course, it's like a million people, so it's like 10% or 100 like it, Would that be 10, 10 times? Thank you. Um, bigger than Folsom, but there's always things to glean from that. Um, and definitely they were putting people first. Um, we're distinctive by nature. And I think that we should incorporate people first as well because that um, summarizes everything. I think that's good in this city. Um, and I think moving forward with these public par private partnerships, we have to come from a place of how and not we can't and figure out a way that we can. And one of the mottos that I like that I heard is, if you like what we're doing today, wait until tomorrow. And that was, I wrote that down and I want to remember that as, um, you know, I continue on this council. So um, I think that covers everything. So thank you. Good. Thank you. Councilman Rodriguez. Uh, well, I am glad to hear that we are going to move forward and do uh, a support on Prop 36, which is the Homeless Drug Addiction and um, Theft Reduction Act, because that's a very important um, part of, I think, making our California a lot safer. And then second, I just want to um, comment on the gentleman who came and spoke about the customer service he received when he had... Um, uh, Mark and his team um, deal with some of the problems that were immediate, and it was a Saturday morning. But it really made me think of, you know, in the past almost four years being on this council, 
Customer service is something that is a part of the fabric of the city and its employees. And I think in any department you go to, you you really do experience that people want to help solve the problem. And it, it, to me, it's no it's not a surprise that on a Saturday morning, someone sends a 7 a.m. email, Ryan gets it, responds by 7.30, and Mark and them are on it. Like, I think I've gotten accustomed to thinking, well, that's just the norm, but it really isn't. And um, I think just overall in maybe in government, but our city does an incredibly great job of customer service. And um, Elaine, I think that is just a testament to um, your leadership. And even earlier when I saw you, um, somebody was coming up with a blue card and you went and you said, may I, may I take this? And I just thought that like that was customer service. And so. I just wanted to comment on that. It's, it's great. You're right. It's great to hear it from from residents, but it, you, I see it all the time that it's become a norm. And so that's it. Thank you, Councilmember Rodriguez. Um, many thanks to our great employees. Thank you. Uh, last week, the mayor and I um, were able to attend um, a ceremony at the Tykert plant in Rancho Cordova off Grantline Road um, to um, announce that the Capital Southeast Connector has received $25 million from the Department of Transportation. So many thanks to Congressman Barra and Kylie for helping to secure that. Um, they talked about um, using that to kind of, uh, you know, widen and fix and all that stuff, that stretch of Grantline Road. Um, that is apparently the deadliest um, stretch in Sacramento County. So really great news. Um, just a reminder that the council will be on recess. So um, no meeting here on August 13th. We'll see you back here on August 27th. I was really hoping for 7 p.m., but it's 7.31 and we're going to adjourn. Thank uh -huh. you, everyone.